everybody. Welcome to the Clear Tai Chi Mastermind Meeting for Friday, April 29th, 2022. Uh, I'm Richard Clear, your resident host. And with me today is Matt Holker, the regional organizer for Maryville, Tennessee, Knoxville area. Hi, everybody. Hello. Daniel Hill in Phoenix, Arizona. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. Sheila Bell in Costa Rica. She's going to tell you what parks. Hey, everybody. I'm in Guanacaste, and I have classes in Liberia and Lionsville, Coco. Good to be here. Welcome. Um, Derek Blakesmith in Cleveland, Ohio. Yep. And thank you very much. And I teach in uh, Berea and in Lakewood. What was the first one? Berea. It's a Berea. town. It's a little uh, college town. Just uh, maybe 10 minutes south of me. Art Don in the Washington, D.C. area. Well, the one I'm in, uh, Greenbelt, Maryland, that is about 12 miles east of Washington, D.C. Welcome. Harry Legg in Verona, New Jersey, outside of New York City. Hello, Big Sifu. Thank you. Uh, the school is New Jersey Tai Chi. Also have an instructor in Fairlawn, New Jersey, Paul Shansky. Thank you. Mark Mashad in Michigan. He's going to tell you what parts. Hi, it's the Midwest Michigan area covering the Lansing and Grand Rapids area. Welcome. Philip Chan in Columbus, Georgia. Hello. Hey, Phil. And Ty Talbert, who was in California, but now is in. Hello, everyone. I am now in San Antonio, Texas. I should have said y'all. <laughs> San Antonio, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you sure that's not part of Tennessee? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Um, so today's topic is we're, we're going to have the tight, Clear Tai Chi family gathering. It's a, This year, it is approximately a little over a month away from now, a month and a couple days. That will be uh, June um, 3, 4, and 5. And if you want to know about that or sign up for that or come to that, it's going to be a great time. That will be at TaiChiGathering.com. And there is a banquet on the Saturday night that is part of what you get with your sign up. Uh, and you also, this is if you sign up before the 14th of May, because we have to have time to place the orders and all of that. Um, you get a free t-shirt with that. If you order after the 14th of May, you can get a t-shirt, it won't be free anymore, and we will probably have to ship it to you because um, the printer will already have done it. All right, um, but we, uh, we're very excited about it. Um, basically, the vast majority of the folks you're seeing here are going to be there. Most of them will be teaching classes um, on different aspects of Tai Chi, and it's a good time. We do have this uh, annually. And so if you're seeing it and this is July or August or September, then we're going to do the same thing the first week, full weekend of June next year. It will be on the Tai Chi Gathering.com website. Um, for this year, uh, we've been talking with the different folks about what their classes are. And if you look through the last six, seven, uh, eight of the nine of the uh, of our podcast here, what you're going to see is different individuals talking about things that pertain directly to the class they're teaching this year. And today it's Ty Talbert and his topic is tai, augmenting Tai Chi for PTSD. And so I'm gonna basically put him in the driver's seat here and I'm gonna start by saying, Ty, if you would please briefly describe your topic um, to us. Okay, and, uh, well, as you mentioned, that I will be teaching the class at the Clear Tai Chi International Gathering on the 3rd to the 5th, and I'm going to expand it a little bit because I look at what I'm teaching as something to help with stress, depression, and PTSD, and the augmentations that I'm going to provide will deal with environment, um, things like location, sounds, smell, flow, which will include which Tai Chi moves to use and which ones not to use, visualizations and cueing. And then finally, community building, which is basically the use of rituals 
And all the things that I will be teaching and doing during that class will be basically to enhance being in the now. So right now I wanna discuss one, what is being in the now? Two, what is the difference between being in the zone and being in the now, or if there is an actual difference? Three, is being in the now good for you, whether physically, mentally, emotionally? Um, what are the rituals used by society to be in the now? And I'm talking about religious rituals, sports, martial arts, and if you could give examples, and what rituals do you use personally to be in the now, okay? So the first question that I mentioned was, what is being the now? Hey, Ty, before you yes. go further, if I may ask, so one of the things I heard you say in the basics of the, like the, the what you're talking about for doing was that mm -hmm. some moves for PTSD, some moves are really good for helping with that. And if I, if I heard you correctly, some moves do not or, or make it worse. No, none of the moves make it worse, but yep. there are some moves. The more rhythmic and flowing the move is done, the better it is for okay. depression and PTSD. So then it's which moves are going to lend themselves to that. Exactly. Um, well, my yeah. own personal favorite is wave hands like clouds. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, a move that I wouldn't use normally would be needle to the bottom of the of the sea. Okay. Okay. Does that explain it? Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, since we're with you right now, um, what is being in the now? Uh, how long do you have for him to describe it? Or are you asking me directly? I'm asking you, you right now. Oh, you're asking me what is being <laughs> yes. in the now. So, yeah, like you said, how long do you have? Um, I think you would be better off Group wise, is it something we're putting to the group or is there, or you want me to try to frame a discussion? I guess I need no, to I, I I would just like, tell you find out what it is fully. Hey, I would like you to give me that easily. And then there's other things. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I would like you to give me maybe a minute. Uh, if you had to do an elevator speech about what is being in the now. So I've got a book that I bought probably in the 1980s, a little bitty book. I need to find it because I don't know where it's at, but it is in my library. And that book is called The Book of Knowledge, right? And it's spelled N-O-W, Ledge. So it's like The Book of Knowledge, The Book of Knowledge. K-N-O-W. Yeah, I'm sorry, K-N-O-W, yeah. No, the book is, the book is knowledge. Oh, knowledge, oh, the. Meaning also knowledge, right. but not spelled like knowledge, spelled like knowledge. And you open up the book and it says, you are here now. and now, and still now. And you go through the book, it's doing this thing where it's keeping you like present and it's designed to keep you present and it's cute, but it actually does what it's trying to do in a really neat way, right? And so being in the now is that you're not thinking about the past at all. You're not thinking about the future at all. You are fully present in this instant at this moment in time and not thinking about anything else except what is going on in this moment. And even then, it's more like you are participating in the moment more than you were thinking about the moment. That's part of that being present. So, and the benefits of that are numerous, like, like holy crap. That's why they said knowledge, playing on the word knowledge um, and all of that. Uh, because it's a certain kind of a knowledge that comes out of it. And so that's, there might be some other part of the simple speech that I should give there, like this, the one minute version. Um, but that's what occurs to me jumping off quickly. Anything else is going to take a lot longer to say. All right. Thank you. I will come back to you if we're running short, which I doubt that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to have that problem. <laughs> All right. Sheila. Um, I know that you have an athletic background, and so I know you've heard of being in the zone. Is there a difference between being in the now and being in the zone? So they, they can overlap, I believe. Um, some of being in the zone can be hormonal, right? So if you are sprinting, if you're running, you get to a point where they say you're in the zone. 
right? It can be triggered from the hormonal protection that your body gives you against being in a lot of pain. Um, but you may also be very present at that time. So that's where I say there's some overlap. Um, I believe that flow has more to do with uh, being present and being in the zone, you know, it kind of depends on your definition. You may also be flowing at that moment. And by flow, I'm saying that you're in the moment, you're focused, everything else around you kind of fades into the background. Um, and all of the movements that you're doing are just coming out perfectly. Like you, you can't make a mistake because you're so present. Um, so I believe that athletes, when they feel that, may call it the zone as well. Excellent, because the class that I'm doing will actually, you know, address flow and the now and all of those sort of things to help with PTSD or to help with depression. Yeah, and I would say that you're, and you can tell me if this is wrong, but from a teaching standpoint, if I'm teaching that, I would be trying to get you, I would use the flow to get you present now so that you don't care about what happened or what's happening next, that you're enjoying that. And I would be actually seeking as fast as I could to get you into the zone with that so that you're really enjoying each instant of presence continuously the whole time. That there's not a point of what did I do or what am I going to do? Doesn't matter. I'm flowing now. This kind exactly. of Exactly. That's, that's one of the segments of the class will be flow you know the, the three segments really are environment flow and community building daniel yeah well and the reason i'm saying get into the zone with that is because you could be flowing and still thinking about how you flowed and where you're flowing to if you can really get in my mind to the zone with that you don't care about those things you're just doing it exactly now. and and that's going to be the ultimate goal of the type of class that I'm going to go ahead and give. Daniel, is there a difference that you can see between being in the zone and flow? With being, my being now. With my subjective definitions of both, I would say they are the same. Uh, and you can use this example, whether it be in an interpersonal relationship or in sports, if you are uh, I would say being in the now is being present. So you're listening to the person. You're not uh, thinking about what you're going to say next or judging what they're saying or anything like that. You're present only with them. And that's being in the now. And, and in the zone is usually used in a sports reference. So if I'm present with someone and from the side, out of my peripheral, I see that a football is coming towards me and I turn to catch it. Well, I kind of was no longer in the zone with the person I was interacting with. And now I'm focused and in the zone as far as catching the ball in that moment. Uh, I think it's just the terminology is used in different examples, but I would say from my perspective, being in the zone and being in the now is the same. Do you have anything to add to that? If you'd like, I can keep talking. <laughs> How long do you want me to talk for? Because no, uh, no, as far as my own examples, uh, trying to be in the now in interpersonal relationships has been uh, more challenging for me. Uh, but when it comes to sports activities, being in the now uh, is less challenging unless I'm, you know, sparring Logan or Steve or something and there's some massive fist coming at my face that takes me out of the now state because I'm anticipating what's going to happen once that uh, hit lands, <laughs> uh, which was something that happened at the last uh, Tai Chi gathering. Um, when Sifu Clear was saying, Tai Chi says yes. Well, Tai Chi says yes in the now state. And if a fist is coming at your face and you're not in the now state, that's a no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, it's actually it's a, big, no. a big, a big no. Yeah, but anyway, Pretty so are much. you saying they're interrelated and in that you can't be in the zone if you're not in the now state? 
for my subjective definitions of both, that is the case, yes. Thank you. I think if you had the hormonal reaction to put you into the zone in a physical way, and then you start trying to like what happened, you go out of the now. Now, if you did that, would you stay in the zone? Depends on, I mean, the chemicals could be enough that it puts you pretty much back into the now and you start going there. But I can see it, I can see it messing with you where you're not completely in the now during some of that. But it's gonna lend itself to if you're gonna work, if you're gonna go with it, it's gonna tend to put you in the now. That's that's I feel like there's some other aspects there that bear addressing, but that you get the idea. Okay. Harry, would you say that being in the now is good for you? Yes, absolutely. Um, so if you're practicing Tai Chi, um, how good is the Tai Chi actually for you? Unless we're talking about the lowest common denominator of, yeah, your butt got up off the couch and you're moving. Okay, sure. That, you know, that that's a good thing, but lowest uh, goal. Um, but if you're doing your Tai Chi, uh, form in particular, could be push hands, of course, but form typically, and you're thinking about your bills and the problem with your kids, or you, whoa, you are not, you are not maximizing what Tai Chi can do for you because your mind is still not at rest. You're not in the present moment, creating that space for you away from all those distractions, which is one of many on the laundry list of how well Tai Chi uh, can help you with stress, anxiety, things of that sort. So being in the now absolutely has uh, benefits for you. It also affects performance. Not just, this is interesting, not just from an athletic standpoint, but uh, I was watching American Idol the other night and it was finalist competition. So the performers on there were really, really good. However, uh, one of the uh, performers came out and she's singing uh, her song. And it was funny because even with my knowing about this stuff, I didn't quite put my finger on what was wrong with the first half of her performance, but then she brought it home at the end. And Lionel Richie starts to critique her at the, uh, at the end. And he says, I shared it on Facebook, by the way, because it, it just really resonated with me. He said, for the first half of the song, I could tell you were thinking you weren't there. But then the second half, you brought it home. You were right there present with us. So is being in the now a good thing for you in multiple avenues? Yes, absolutely. It affected her performance and she got called out on it by Lionel Richie. And you could see it, you could feel it. And, and, and when she did come into her zone and be in the now, it was amazing. So. Greg, could you give us some other examples of how being in the now is good for you? Who? I'm sorry, who were you asking? I'm sorry, Jared. Jared. Can you ask that again? I'm sorry. Yes, can you give us some other examples of how being in the now is good for you? Um, sure. So uh, Harry kind of spoke about how it's good for you in your form. Let's say I, I like to go on hiking. And when I'm out in the forest, if I am not, even if it's been dry, um, the ground is not very stable sometimes. And so if I'm not paying attention, if I'm not where I'm at when I'm there, then I might trip, I might fall off a ledge or, you know, just whatever, just stumble. And I'm also not appreciating it as much. If I'm thinking about like, you know, what the forest was, you know, last week or last year. I'm not there right now. I have a better appreciation for what I'm doing in my life and the activities that I'm doing when I'm with them right now. In so Tennessee, in, yeah, in Tennessee, if you are not present now in the forest, mm -hmm. you're probably going to get to stay there. Yeah, I, I, Hannah and I have hiked a bit up in the mountains and I can definitely feel that. Yeah, either the bear <laughs> will eat you and be happy that you weren't in the now, or snake, and I've had the snake thing happen twice, once with a rattlesnake, once with a copperhead. 
And the rattlesnake, one of the persons in our in our small group there, like negative, and I was close enough to where I could have been involved in it, could have stepped on it. It was small, didn't see it. And fortunately, just before we were stepping on it, somebody who was very present and now was like, hey, hey, that's a, there's, a, there's a snake. I think it's a rattlesnake. On the copperhead, we literally walked down, we're walking down the path. We were in the now, and it was like, and it was all the way across the path. It was like, that's a copperhead. And we were, you know, they talk about how dangerous they are in terms of like being aggressive and stuff too. And we were calm and really present. And we walked up to it within six feet. Snake kept going across the path like we weren't there. We didn't, because we were in the now and then present like that and aware and just stopped, didn't go anywhere, didn't back off, didn't do anything, didn't raise a record, just, no, oh, copperhead. Okay, and waited, and it just kept on going. And like that. And for anybody at home that would go, why didn't you kill it? Or is it that you're such a nature lover? A, yes, I try not to kill things uh, outside in their habitat reasonably. A and B, it's a national park. If you killed that snake, you just committed a felony. And I'm not big on committing felonies. So. Hopefully, none of us here at Clear Tai Chi are really big on committing felonies. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if I found a copperhead in my yard, um, I'm killing it. Story. But I'm not committing a felony, and I don't need anybody to get bit by a copperhead because because there, there was one hanging out, you know, around the house. Anyways. And actually, the way you handle it here is you don't kill the copperhead. You get a nice black snake that then becomes your house black snake. And it eats all the other ones. Nature naturing. Yep. <laughs> Art, how about you? Can you give me some examples of being in the now or when you've been in the now? Well, the uh, best example that comes to mind and been alluded to already is is doing the form, the Tai Chi form. And among other you know, various forms, um, I know a, a longer yang form that approximately 20 minutes to, to perform. And I, I get out and I'm doing my things and my pre-exercises and meditation. And, and then I start doing the form. And um, sometimes I guess I'm in a better frame of mind or mood for doing, doing the form or just doing this and and um, I'm, I'm feeling better about it. And sometimes I say, well, okay, here I go, you know, 20 minutes of doing Tai Chi. But, but I start to form and it's not, not quite mechanical, but perfunctory sort of just beginning and doing it. And then I'm quickly paying more attention to doing the form and going along and flowing. And then, um, you, after a little bit of doing the form, I'm just just doing the form, not exactly paying attention to it, but but aware there and aware of, of, of everything. And then I, I feel the the energy flowing, and I'm going through and one move to the next, or one posture to the next, and, and then I at a point I realize I'm at I'm at the end. And I thought. My goodness, that that didn't seem like twenty minutes, and and I was just doing the doing the form, and I know I went through the postures. I didn't have a problem with it, and um, I, I think that um, seems to me a case of being in the now, where it just flows from one now moment to the next, and it's not a passage of time with the sense of awareness of oh, here goes 20 minutes of Tai Chi and then it's going to be over. It just begins and then now and now and now and then it's over. So that sort of strikes me as um, being in the now, just without having distractions and paying a lot of intellectual attention to what I'm doing, but just sort of doing it. But um, and, and then besides just doing the yang form with, with um, other exercises I do now and I, I do the practice and various things, I start and I'm, I'm doing one, one exercise and then another and meditation and different sort of um, levels of the Tai Chi process from you know basically to Chi and, and um, Shen and 
spirit, for example, and, and I'm going through doing these things and, and not with a lot of thought, but just doing these different processes that sort of go together. And again, a, a, a great amount of time could, could have been passed and I wasn't aware, like watching myself do something. I was, I was just doing it. Um, so that, that strikes me as, again, just being in the now without distraction, but doing things. Now, it almost sounds like you took um, Sifu Clear's book of knowledge, knowledge, and made it physical. We went from one page to the next of being in the now, but made it physical. Well, it, you know, and, and that's a, the, the first I'd heard of the book from Sifu Clear just now, but, you know, you brought up the question and that's, uh, you know, the best example I could give of, of doing it, um, being, you know, being in the now. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Bill, do you have any examples for us of being in the now? Yeah, so I guess the um, the thing to the degree that you're not in the now, if your attention is in the future, you know, worries about the future or regrets or anger about the past, to the degree that you're living there, you're missing out on what is really life. So you're not really living life. You're living. You're living in something that it doesn't really exist. And I guess an example would be like ideally we would be eating mindfully in the now, and you would really taste and enjoy every piece of food that you eat. And to the degree that you're thinking about something else, you're really missing out on the meal. And I guess that's like a metaphor for life. Yeah, I think that's excellent because that's actually one of the things that I use to teach my students and that I have them be very mindful about when they're eating a meal and tell them don't watch TV or anything of that nature. Just pay attention to everything you eat. It's a good example. Mark, we haven't heard from you. Do you have any ide ideas about being in the now or examples of yourself being in the now? Yeah, actually, actually, uh, just listening to you guys talk and then the line of questions at the beginning when you were framing it um, kind of got me on a, an interesting line of thought related to that. And it's not so much me being in the now, but understanding when I'm not in the now. And, and what it is, is, uh, you know, you were talking about martial arts, past martial arts training. And most of it was going to be more like Japanese or Okinawan. And so you have these concepts of uh, mushin, the no mind, uh, zanshin, the being hyper alert, aware of everything, uh, kime, focus, where you're super concentrated and can concentrate every all your being on a single point. Um, and, and so, you said those again. Is, mushin is no oh, mushin is no mind. What was the next one? Uh, yeah. So the mushin, the no mind, is the 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 chatter, removing the chatter. Yep. And then uh, Sanshin is the alertness. Uh, they kind of almost go in steps. So you'll have this, this alertness, this extreme alertness that kicks in. Uh, and, then, and then there's Kime, which is the, uh, that single-minded focus where all of your being is doing, is made a decision to commit to a certain action or it's a punch or, a, or whatever. And uh, and there's another concept that I'm forgetting. I, I, I just can't remember. It's, it's drifting for me. But, but they're all, I realized that they were really all, they were trying to get that sense of here and now. They never really said it. But they were, that's all kind of lending to that here and now idea. And what when I, like I is that they had you do different parts, very isolated. Um, and so that when, you, when you've done training in all of them, then it starts to get you into a different level of, towards now and focus yeah but they didn't say it so you didn't you didn't know what the end goal was if you were in a zen state would they say you were doing all of these things at the same time or does that become its I, own sort of thing i i think that the zen state is kind of that would be here and now that's they but they didn't really elaborate on it they didn't make that conclusion or connection mm -hmm. and uh i realized that 
when I'm doing Tai Chi and I, I, I feel like I, it's like, uh, it's like, I'm like here and now, here and now, here and now, but I'm getting from one here and now to the next, there's a lapse or break. And I realized when I was listening to everybody that it's because of the way the, uh, the routines, the forms were set up, they have this bang, bang. So there's a, a lapse almost where you think you're here and now, but you're not, you're racing to the two points. Nice thing, yeah. And that's, that's, I realized that that's why probably I struggle with the in-between because Tai Chi, if there is no endpoint, you know what I mean? You're flowing from one thing to the next without an endpoint. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm having endpoints. Yep. And so there's, there's a, there's, it's getting smaller, but I still have lapses in the middle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess more so I, I, I tend to, when I learn a concept, I try to compare extremes, you know? So, so like with this, I, I, I can use this now, I think this idea of the karate where it's like, bang, bang, I can use that as an, as a, as the opposite. So I can compare and it's going to get, it should help me get the, that smooth continuous here now better with that kind of idea in my mind. Mark, when you brought up Sanchen about uh -huh. being very aware of everything going on around you, that is actually a problem for people who have PTSD. And that, and I'm talking about myself personally, is that I couldn't be here and now because I needed to know who was behind me. I needed uh -huh. to know what somebody else was doing to the left of me or what was going on outside. Um, so that was one of the things that I had to overcome to be in the here and now is not to be hyper aware of absolutely everything going on around me because my mind would hop to each individual thing like, okay, I need to be aware. What is that person doing? Why is this person stop moving behind me? Why is this person breathing hard? What, what was that noise I heard outside? And so if you're working with people with PST, PTSD, that's something you need to be aware of, that they are hyper aware. Uh, that probably when you were in times of danger was probably something that was helpful in the moment though, wasn't it? Or Yes. Yeah. It's just, then you get back to a, a safe thing. You can't get it to kick off. Exactly. Okay. So when I talked to you some years ago about and have you doing some stuff to be present in the now, if I recall correctly, when you would try to just go straight into the now, it would trigger you. Yes. And so is it that you've now learned the technique that you're gonna share at the, at the gathering for how to get somebody into the now where because of the way you're getting there, it's not, instead of triggering, it's making, it's helping them instead of triggering them. Exactly. And so it's, is it just something different that they're going to be thinking about or are there some trap practices they do that make it, oh, that's a nice way to be in the now. And so then it's less triggering or, or going to make it so that they're not getting triggered. No, Sheila brought it up uh, right from the very beginning when she talked about flow. And um, so when you have flow, that will go ahead and bring you into the now without making you hyper aware you're active it's active now and supposed to passive now and passive, passive now, now exactly what feels like passive now is going to be more triggering active now is i'm doing something exactly so it's not as yeah i get it okay okay cool okay matt um yeah so let me um let me say from a neurological perspective um what being in the now can do for you because uh, in your head at least you have three brains everybody kind of thinks of it as one but you actually have three um and they can communicate with each other but there you you have basically your amygdala which is kind of responsible for your body's automatic functions and basic need level kind of functioning there's the limbic system which is much more tied into your emotions and those two brains are always in the now. They do not have a future or a past sense. 
But the catch is the only part of your brain that's actually like self-aware or aware of any of the other parts is your neocortex. And your neocortex allows you to reflect on past mistakes and project that into the future and learn things. And so the great challenge for us as human beings is to use that gift of the ability to learn things in a way that allows us to basically reprogram the earlier, more automatic um, kind of autopilot systems of our brain to, to have better and more intelligent responses and how to use consciousness to um, kind of hone other areas of our, of our awareness, of our responses, of our, of our minds and our emotions and our beings. And in order to do that really effectively, your conscious mind has to meet your unconscious mind at the level, at some point, in order to really be aware of it and figure out what's going on, it has to meet your unconscious mind at the level where your unconscious mind is pro processing. And like I said, that is happening in the now. And so, um, you know, for the, for the kinds of uh, the higher level things that, that uh, the Tai Chi can take you to and the kinds of self-work that are possible within the framework of Tai Chi, uh, that, is, that stuff is only possible if you have access to that now state. And, um, and a lot of these, the, the other kinds of benefits of the now, you know, we think about, we talk about things like the flow state and being in the zone. And those things are kind of the goals, but, um, but being in the now is kind of the gateway to it. And that's why is because being in the now is fully necessary for us to have real connection and communication between all three levels of our brain and our mind. Um, and it's not, and it's, and it is a gift to be able to reflect on things in the past. And it is a gift to be able to project what that will mean in the future the plan. Uh, and to plan and all that. But most people spend almost their entire conscious lives, either in the past or in the future, which means there's a limit to how much you're able to, you're, you're going to ever be able to kind of self-correct or, adjust uh with intelligence and intention um you know what your reactions are 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 like because it's all happening at an unconscious level and you're if you never really tap into that if, if, you, if you don't get into the moment you can't really tap into that <laughs> um, and so if you, if you never really tap into that you can't figure out what's going on you can't make adjustments um and there's a big part of you that will be governed by like knee jerk reactions and things that happened to you when you were five years old and you won't even be aware of it, like the, that it's going on in the background, but it affects all sorts of areas of your life. Um, and, uh, and, and there are smart, intelligent things that we as human beings can do about it. But one of the first things that you have to be able to do is really kind of calm that monkey mind down and really get your conscious mind in the present moment as fully and completely as it can be. Uh, in order to do that work. Thank you. Um, I want to move on to the, the fourth question, which is rituals in society. And when I'm talking about rituals, talk about rituals that you'd find in religion, sports, or martial arts. And they're used to by different groups to be in the now. Uh, Daniel, could you give me some examples of rituals that are used by our society. Well, so make it more personal. What are some rituals you use? Well, that was actually question number five. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> for our time basically. Let's, let's make that one the thing. Okay. Um, I thought you wanted this to. I, well, not, I'll I, let I, you, you want to stay last. The, yeah, there's a time element here that we're going okay. to pass. I'm here reasonably sure that by addressing it on a more personal level, we'll start to hit on yeah, things. Yeah, we'll start to hit on things. Uh, all right. So. Um, Daniel, what personal rituals do you have? Uh, uh, the two most common principles for me, I actually, uh, one of them I got from Clear Tai Chi and the other one was made better by Clear Tai Chi. Uh, one that I've kind of always had is trying to take a deep breath before I do something to kind of put me in the now state or in the zone or kind of prepare myself for whatever it is I anticipate is coming next. Um, although now I do that with whole body breathing, so that's a lot easier. 
the other thing is that I got from Clear Tai Chi for putting me more in the now state or getting in the zone is hanging from a string. Uh, just hanging, being present, uh, that little change with breath puts me into uh, a state and that's a ritual I do throughout the whole day uh, if I ever notice something is off or whether it be with my mind or body or anything else, that's the ritual that I use to Which, center myself. Say that ritual again, what you're saying, what is it? Hanging from a string and whole body breathing. Oh yeah, okay. Or at least one, one yeah, major breath. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna steal that one. Sheila, do you have any personal rituals? I think that uh, breath is probably a common thread for all of us because it's a fantastic way to be in the now. Um, it's one of the few things you can kind of hold on to and yet is constantly happening. <laughs> um, so yeah, the marrow breathing before marrow washing has become a bit of a ritual for me. Um, another thing that comes to mind for me is when I'm swimming. The, the way you breathe is almost inverted, you know, because you're inhaling quickly through the mouth and then exhaling kind of long through the nose. So um, I, I'm, I'm so often in the now when I swim that I don't even know like how long I've been swimming. People are always saying, well, how far did you swim today? I'm like, I don't know. I, I got in and I did it. And then when I was done, I got out because I'm focused on the breath, I'm in the now. Um, and another thing that's a bit of a flow and is also a ritual is making coffee. The way we make coffee here in Costa Rica is um, not with a machine. It's with a little cloth bag. And so when you're pouring the water, you have to have good aim and you have to have good control and you want the flow to be a certain you know, velocity. And then you're watching the coffee come out. It's changing color and it's filling the receptacle. And you know, it's just this whole thing, right? and the aroma. And so you're really involved in that experience. And I think if you can find things like that throughout your day where you can focus and there's little changes and flow, um, it, you know, you can essentially be in the now, I wouldn't say maybe 24 seven, but a, a, a fair portion of the day, like, like the um, meals that we mentioned, you know, if you're actually being mindful as you're eating, right? Uh, I haven't, I'm not hundred percent on that one yet myself, but <laughs> I do try to sort of, you know, place it in strategic parts during my day. When I'm, when I'm uh, making my chocolate, I'm definitely in the now while I'm tempering and then pouring into the molds and becomes a very meditative process. When I eat your chocolate, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the, I don't, if you've noticed, whenever you've seen me do it normally, like most the vast majority of the time i only do one piece partially because i don't i'm very sensitive to caffeine and any kind of substances because they pretty most i don't eat like completely clean in a way that certain like there's all kinds of different diets but for me on a historical basis i eat pretty clean so i'm very sensitive to substances right including chocolate even for the caffeine in. so i normally will only eat one piece but almost every time I don't just pop up my mouth and go. It's mindful like every time. I really enjoy the, and I know that because of the kind of chocolate and the quality of that chocolate and the other things, there are flavors and things in there. And so I'm, it's an experience pretty much every time. A like meditation that. that melts in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, there, there should be a little bit of chi in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can taste that cheese. Anyways, that wasn't the one I was going to use, but I had to add it based on what you were talking about there. So, Okay. I'm right there with you anyway. Phil, how about yourself? Are there, do you have any personal rituals? Phil? He's do on you have any per Yes. Do He's you have any me. personal rituals? He's trying to get him off mute. Oh, Phil, you got to get off mute. And that would really give you the ability as the person who does the calls, you put them on mute, Zoom ought to really, Zoom, this is for you. You really ought to give people the ability to all, who are controlling the call to also take people off of mute. <laughs> Although there might be other problems with that. 
me think about it. Depends on the kind of call. Our kind of call is fine. I, so I'm thinking there might be other uses for the platform that maybe not so good. Anyway. Uh, I, I do a sitting meditation. So I have different, there are different ways I do it, but that's probably something I do on a pretty regular basis. Okay. And Harry? Well, so when I'm drinking my delicious cold brew coffee. <laughs> Which you have gotten me addicted to. Uh, what? No. Yes. Um, anyway. Salted caramel cream. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I've changed to just cold brew with oat milk. There's no real sugar or any of the bad <laughs> stuff anymore. So uh, that was a while ago. Um, so, yeah, it's your question, you know, really made me think because I'm like, I, I, I hadn't really considered anything I do a ritual. But as I think throughout almost every day, uh, something that I'm doing where I'm absolutely in the now is that almost every day I have someone somewhere um, that I'm doing fogung, energy healing on. And you are absolutely in the now every moment that you are feeling. It's yeah, otherwise you're not really doing it. If I'm like, oh hey yeah, I'll have the you know the spaghetti tonight. Yeah, that that isn't going to work. So I've got to really be in the now um, when I'm doing that, and um, I, I do that almost every day for someone somewhere. Um, Changing the skill that keeps on giving. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So, and, and, and when I'm savoring this, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any rituals that they like to, to mention? Well, um, I, I was going to say initially uh, meditation, but that's been alluded to, which probably a lot of people practice, but also so maybe, think, when, maybe when you guys are both, you and Phil both, when you're saying meditation, is there a specific meditation you're doing that has a now component to it? Because you could meditate where you're meditating on the past or you're meditating on the future, or you're meditating about things that are gonna not necessarily be, they may or may not be in the now, depending on what aspect of it it is. So is there one that you guys are doing that you're going, that meditation is really putting me in the now, keeping me in the now, bringing me to now, this kind of thing? Well, in that case, I would have to say, um, doing the, the hold the bowl, because that involves the least um, sort of extra processes as opposed to the meditation of going inside the body and then outside the body, um, which, which is good and has a lot of uses and like that. Or the, the marrow washing, which maybe the, the marrow washing, again, could be performed in the now and ideally probably should be. But again, when I involve my mind more or more processes, I might get distracted. So if I just hold the bowl, I know I'm, I'm holding the bowl and can can release and let um, energy sort of go out and um, relax, 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 and quiet, quiet, quiet myself. And that's really the one I guess that can get me the most in the now and then I can become I'll become more aware of what's going on around me without having to focus on any one particular thing it's just everything is just sort of sort of there Bill same question you're on mute yeah I I guess one of the things I do is uh I have two one of the things I do is I listen to the silence or listen, try to get into the silence. That. And that just puts me in a single place and uh, it allows me to stay in one place. And I, if I get distracted, then I can't listen to the silence. So that's something I do with some regularity. I don't know, Ty, uh, you might, well, just to... The, the two that you guys have mentioned already, the, the breathing and the concentrating on the breathing, the meditation has been great. Um, and the, the other thing that I've used in the past is uh, like a visualization, just imagining someplace that's very peaceful or someplace where you're very comfortable and getting into that, uh, the now, the zone. But 
um, I, I don't know if you've ever had the experience, Ty, or if you're in a high stress environment or you're, you're uh, in a fight or in a, you know, a confrontation. And it, it, it's funny, the thing that I've noticed, like you said, a habit or a, a ritual is a lot of people will actually strike themselves or just like bring that, that slap or that, you know, it does, it, it tends to bring your senses and bring you right into the, into the moment, which uh, if you've made a mistake or you've taken a shot or, <laughs> you know, you, you just, uh, you sort of cancel it out or get back into the now by striking yourself and, and getting re it's like a reset almost. I know you see that a lot with MMA fighters uh, that, before they enter the ring, you'll see them thump their chest, that sort of thing. Um, and I was really looking at things that were more simple, like I'm sure that you have your students bow in. That's a very um, simple ritual that you bow in or you bow out that puts you in the now, I'm here for training. I don't bow in when I go to eat lunch or anything, but now I wanna be here present for training, I bow in. Um, personally, when I'm getting ready to go in a fight or something, I know I'm in a bad position when I blade, when I go sideways and I don't face you directly, then I know that, okay, this is what I do before I start fighting is that I usually blade. Jim, do you have any rituals like that for your students in your school other than bowing in? I, actually, we uh, like you had mentioned, I, I start off, or some of the people have mentioned, I start off every class with a, a, a breathing, you know, just taking four or five breaths and going through the whole, you know, inhaling and exhaling and slowing everything down. So it's, it's similar to the bowing uh, uh, ritual. But. Time. Time. A good point, um, and there's actually a couple points there that uh, that are worth mentioning. One is, I think we all have rituals that we use to get in the now in various ways, and we just don't mostly think of them as that. And another point that I think kind of came out of that that may be a little less obvious is that there's different things you can be like in the now and present with. And so there's different kinds of rituals that uh that we may use to get present with different kind of aspects of whatever it is we're working on um like for me i can be very much I, you know i'm working on being in the now with my movement and my form and that kind of thing but i'm also working on other aspects of um like my mind and um and thoughts and emotions and things like that where i if i'm very very present with that my body to a large extent or lots of things that I could be present with in my body, I'm, I'm almost not aware of them at all. doesn't mean I'm not present. It's just that I'm not present with those things because they would be a distraction to what I'm trying to kind of get into. And so different aspects of being in the now actually call for, and I have different rituals for like getting, for, for getting into the now in different ways and looking at different things with it. Um, and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, the bow is a great one say, but that, you know, that you mentioned, it's a great one for getting people kind of present with like what they're about to do in class. And it really primes them for getting ready to kind of get into that Tai Chi mode um, and be attentive to it. Um, but then, you know, different situations will, will call for different rituals in that way. I, I appreciate you bringing that up about being in the now because in different situations, because this is not about just your martial arts life, but it's about your life overall. My father, one of the ways that he would get in the now was that when we get in the car, he would make sure everyone had their seat belts on. He would check all of his mirrors. He had this whole little ritual of what he had to do before he turned the key and we drove off. And so when people can recognize those rituals that help them be in the now, whether it's driving a car or eating a meal or doing the martial arts, 
that will help with things like stress and anxiety and PTSD. Okay. Um, we have discussed. So hold on. So yes. okay. who hasn't weighed in on it? Mark, did you weigh in on it? Can I just say something real quick that's related? Sure. Uh, sure. Just as a, a, a bow is often a way to focus in. Uh, some, I had a, uh, my ninjutsu struct, instructor, uh, one of the things that was a ritual for him to get him all focused up was just tying the belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's truly that is a ritual. Yeah, it is. It is. I didn't think of it. Yeah, but that that, years, for him, that was it. yeah, that was a big deal. Yep. Graduated to formlessness. I can still tie a square knot in my sleep. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, did you weigh in already, or no? Not yet. Um, okay, some go of the ahead. good ones were already taken. The bowing in at the beginning of class and tying the belt was a good one. Now, those are all the rituals that kind of put you in that state. Um, one thing I was going to say, having to do with rituals, is uh, like a ritual is something that you do consciously. And then if you do it long enough, it becomes unconscious. Yeah. But what I find is like the true here and now. Okay, like for example, if someone has a ritual and then it shifts to unconscious, if I do something to, like I do something between step three and four, I can completely derail them. Because they have a thing that's going bing, 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 bing. When, they, when it's true here and now, you can be interrupted and you keep doing what you're doing. The, the ritual isn't disrupted in any way. Or, or the, 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 the steps in the software, you think of it like lines of code and software, those don't get disrupted when you're truly here and now. Whereas if you are operating, uh, there's there's an active mind state that's missing when it becomes unconscious. Yeah, and then it goes out of the now. Yeah. It doesn't stay in the now if you do that. Uh, so it, if you're doing it where there's a very deliberate like that and you're present for each one that's helping you to be in the now. But if it's just like, yeah, I'm doing this thing while I'm thinking about this other stuff or about what was or what would be, then it's really easy to not be in the now. The, the, the ritual becomes so, what's the word I'm looking for? Automated. Automated that, that your mind is somewhere else, able, easily able to be doing something else somewhere else. Yeah. And there's a fine line you kind of have to walk there too, because like if you don't know the Tai Chi form well enough and you try to stay in the now all the way through it, you're going to be thinking about like what comes next and did I do that last part right? Too often you're not going to be able to be in the now. You have to know it well enough that it can be automatic and yet still be very mindful and present with it at the same time. Anyway, I'm, I get, I, I'm sorry, that was a little off the yeah. point, but. <laughs> well, you know, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was in line with yeah what i was thinking so so do you have any personal ritual that you do that they're willing to share of course that would be one that kind of does put you in the now put you or keep you in the now okay so what it does is it keeps me in the now i would say and what it is is um many many years ago um i worked in a residential treatment facility with uh juvenile offenders and they are very good at manipulating people, emotionally, mentally. They just sit and watch you and figure out what your weakness is. Yeah. And so a lot of people get run right out of that job. They can't handle it. Um, and so um, I was struggling when I first started doing that job. Uh, it's stressing me out. Mm -hmm. And so I, what I did was I had to take a hard look at what they were saying and what they're doing is I recognize the things they were pointing out had some validity or truth to them. You know, they would look for inconsistencies in your ethics or your morals or whatever and yep. play on that, make them bigger. And so what I did was I did a lot of research uh, into like codes of conduct and ethics and morality and stuff. And I developed uh, uh, my personal kind of honor code, which became yep. the honor code for my karate school later. And uh, at first I would have to go over it 
mentally through the five steps at the beginning of every shift, I would go through that list. And when they would ask me questions, I would to try to manipulate or whatever, I would have to go, okay, step one, step two, step three, and go through that process to get to an answer. And sometimes when I got to step five, I knew what the right answer was, but the, uh, that kind of those hooks they have in you to manipulate you emotionally, you know, you didn't want to do it and you just had to gut it and, and do what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and, but over time, what happened was, it becomes uh, like a software program operating all the time in the back. And so that helps keep me in the now because I don't have to, you know, all of a sudden feel guilty and think of the past or worry about my actions to the future because this honor code makes it so that I know that most of the time my intentions are, um, are correct. And, uh, and it makes it very easy to commit to a course of action. So it keeps it helps to keep me in the here and now each moment. I don't know if I'm explaining but, this but well. People but people are trying to take you off your game. You're saying yes. Yeah, people are trying to pull you out. They're trying to pull you in the past, put you in the future. Look what I did for you. I thought I thought we were friends. You know, were the past. You know what I mean? Um. You know, I'm going to do this for you in the future. You know, look at all this stuff we can accomplish tomorrow. It, it, there's different ways, but oftentimes it is. I didn't think about it, but they're pulling you out either in the past or future in some sort of way. I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to manipulate someone who's standing in front of you in the present, in the present moment. You have to get them thinking about the past or the future more, not always, but more, most often to do that. Even three cards, like where they're doing the shuffle the cards, mm -hmm. you're trying to think about where they were, not where they are. Mm. You want to figure out where they are, but you're having to like try to go back into what they did to get there. Everything smoothed out, by the way. Once I got good with that, it, it was it was the cheesiest job I ever had and the most fun. Yeah, yeah so. Cool. Yep. Yet another benefit of being in the present. <laughs> yeah. Jared, did you get the way in on this? Uh, no, not yet. And I've been thinking about it as everyone else has been talking. And uh, I think the main thing I do every single day as kind of a ritual, so to speak, is when I'm working on my forms. Um, I don't look at it as like, oh, I've got to run through the choreography. I look at it as I'm moving this energy. I'm, I'm moving, you know, I've got to feel this, uh, how it's moving through me getting all the way out to my fingers, how it's coming back into me and stuff like that. I'm not just marching through it and like, oh, geez, good job. I, I, I finished it. And now I can move on to the next one. And if I feel, and this is my main thing, I, there's a certain amount of, I practice it enough. I know what I'm looking for. And if I don't feel that, I just start over. I do that move over again, or I do it as a drill. And, you know, or if I feel like, uh, like, oh, I'm feeling kind of weird in, you know, my arm or my shoulder. So I'm going to work on opening that up and stuff. And I'm looking for that, you know, that openness, but I've got to be present with it. If I'm just like, you know, expecting it, then I get more frustrated because like, oh, the gosh, it's not happening. And I actually close up more. If I'm thinking like, you know, well, I was, I was more open up yesterday. I'll just be like yesterday when maybe I could be more open today or maybe, there's more humidity, so I'm, I'm less open or something. I got to be open to what the day presents to me and work with it from there. And I, I do my forms in the moment. So I think that would be the most ritual I probably can think of right off the top of my head. Okay. Is there anybody that didn't get to weigh in on this yet? Art, did you get to weigh, weigh in on this? You did. Yeah, I uh, talked a bit about the meditation and Okay, yes, meditation is. So, so I have a question. Um, so I, I haven't weighed in on it yet. So if it's a question oh, pertaining sorry. to that, where I, no, that's okay, where I would still weigh in, then I will. Otherwise, if it's like something that starts to go into another aspect, then, then wait. But if it's something that pertains to what's been said so far, we're still good, then say it now. Which one's better? Yeah, so this really pertains. Okay. My, my question is... And I, was, I, I guess I hadn't thought of it until just until we had this conversation right now is 
is if you're doing form and you're really feeling the energy flowing, I think you're in the now. I don't think you can feel the energy if you're not in the now. Or am I mistaken? I think you're right. Cool. Okay. But again, that goes to different aspects. You know, there's there's different things you can be sort of present with. And so, yeah, you can be present with that energy flow. And then is is there more that you can be aware of and present with, like, in that? Or is that a hindrance to you to try to do that? And, there, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you can kind of be present with. If you're really yes. feeling the energy flow and like that and like flowing, like you said, yeah, it's going to be really hard to do that and not be present because like flowing is constant. Right. And so if you're, if you're just feeling like an energy connection and trying to feel for that, where you may feel it here and there and kind of like, yeah, I can kind of tell it's on, and you know, you don't necessarily have to be present with that, but if you're really feeling the energy flowing the whole time and, and you really are feeling that, it's going to be very difficult to do that without being, you know. Yeah. Cool. Moment. Okay. Go ahead, Seagull. Okay. So two things. The uh, I try to make it a point to pray every day. I don't always make it every day. Some days I have to get up and run right out of the bed, and it's like that. Um, I try not to have a whole lot of those kind of days, but they happen. But otherwise, I pray. And the way that I begin my prayers is that I feel God and I feel for God in terms of like, if you thought of like substance for lack of a better way to say this. And I try to connect to that and I feel for that connection to that. And when I do that, it is whatever is happening right now because I'm trying to connect to God right now. And trying to really feel for it right now and trying to be part of that connection right now. Right. And it's and it's moment by moment. And if there's something there that's being transmitted to me, I want to be open and aware of that transmission. And so I have to be in this very listening, um, receiving kind of a state, even though I'm making that connection and all of that. And so it has it's it's only about now and for god not that i'm speaking for god by any means but it's all now so you're saying that your ritual is the connection before you actually pray action yeah yeah okay. and then after i'm done praying i will make that connection again and spend some time just having that connection like not trying to do anything but be connected So that's that's that one, and there may be more to that or questions. If there are, ask them. It's fine. I'll answer what I can. The other one is is that when I was in my early twenties and in college, I came to a realization that a lot of folks who were out of school. And older, but not a lot older, but from there to older, and not everybody, but a lot of folks had a sort of a glazed over aspect to them where like something in them had died or had uh, or was asleep. And that the older they were under those conditions, the worse that was to the point of almost zombified for a or a better way to say it just not really you know so you kind of go up to grandma and you're standing there with her and you're hey grandma what what huh what you know and it's this thing and she wasn't there with you really but it wasn't like she was anywhere else either or he but you know um if it's grandpa but the uh the point was i noticed this and it stood out to me and i could feel in myself where if I stayed on a certain track that that would happen to me and I was horrified and I went okay what to some degree what was causing that although I, I actually spent less time on why 
I just figured it was, uh, and my degree is in communications, that literally we sort of get buy into the program of all the media, and there wasn't an internet back then in the 1980s, and just the way that life goes, and you sort of fall into this thing where you're basically sleeping through your life. And then it becomes that. And I decided very directly that I didn't want to do that. And I can see a certain aspect of aging, whether that be mental aging or whatever, as a part, as a product of doing that, as a result of doing that, of, of, of people being this asleep thing that I'm talking about. So the first thing I did was made it a point to be, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm present, I'm here, I'm actually present. And I did it a lot. And every time I felt myself get into a place where I was like, life's starting to get this, I don't know how to say it, falling asleep and being asleep, walking through your life asleep thing, I would go back to just looking at this and looking at that and looking at this and looking at that and looking at that. And so I'm getting a present and present and present and present. And what that got to for me was that most of the time, in most situations, I will take in the scene, the whole scene, the way it looks, the way it feels. And if there's anything there that's transmitting information somehow. So you could say if something was out of place, that's one, but it's not just that. What is that person looking like? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they mindful? Are they in la la land? Are they, you know, are they, or is it that they're, they're walking asleep, basically? Are they present or not? What kind of activity, if they're, in, if they're involved in something, even if they're in a lull right now, are they energized? They've been doing something. Are they not energized and would rather be going to sleep, going, going home and going to bed right now, you know, tired? Are they getting ramped up and excited because they're going to do something? All those things. And normally when I take it in, I'll take it in the way that I'm kind of taking in all of you at once right now. And when you do that, and so it's sort of like what you said, the PTSD, where if you know what's going on over here and you know where the door is and you know where the thing is, except instead of going, oh, that thing over there and that thing over there and that thing over there, what it became is I know where it all is now. Present in the moment. And it's not a frantic thing. In fact, if it's frantic, it starts to narrow the picture. It's a aware observation in this moment thing. And if you've been spent, for those of you that have had to spend real time around me, if you play it back in your head, and I can tell most of you are that have had that experience, and I can tell him particularly, he's sitting here going, oh. There's all these times where I turned to him and said, hey, this is going on. And he's looking at the, what I'm looking at going, what made you say that? I can see it. It also really strikes me how much being present um, and knowing are related because it's really easy to take someone out of the present by introducing something they don't understand. And so the more you are in like what he was talking about there with his ritual of the, about like kind of kind of reading people and, and getting to know like what was what was really going on there and all that kind of stuff and how it turns into this knowing. And then at a certain point, you can just be present with all of it and know what's going on with all of it. And as long as you do, you can be present with kind of more and more of that. But then when something is introduced that you're not sure about, you're going to have to explore a little bit of past and future to kind of wrap your head about it. Well, and when I look at people, I normally am not trying to read them. If I tried to read them, I would look at him. I would start trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm trying to figure out what I saw, not what I'm seeing. 
you know, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm just saying a lot of people would go, I'm reading, I'm reading the thing and it's like, I don't actually, I'm not actually doing that. What I'm doing is I'm trying to actually see it. I'd like to touch on something that Matt said that I think is important for these type of classes is not introducing something that people have to figure out that if you introduce something to these classes while you're doing the class, that they will be brought out of the now. And so that's one of the very important aspects of doing these sort of classes is that they know what to expect, that nothing is unusual, nothing makes them think about what's going on so that they stay in the now, so stay present. Mm -hmm. And with this, um, I will be giving a demo class on all of those things, on using environment, flow, and community building in a way that will enhance the now. And these things will help alleviate stress, depression, and PTSD. And these will all be taught at the Clear International Tai Chi Gathering, which is from the 3rd until the 5th of June. Thank you. And the, the website for that is Tai Chi Gathering, www.taichi, T-A-I-C-H-I, gathering, Tai Chi Gathering, dot com. Yes, and if you happen to be listening to this after uh, the 3rd through 5th of June, go to Tai Chi Gathering dot com anyway, because uh, we're going to be having the event year after year after year. And you can find out all about what we did. If we know what we're getting up to next year, we'll put updates on there. You can get on our email list so that you can be the first to know when we know more about what's going on next year. Um, and so no matter what, no matter what's going on, go to Tai Chi Gathering dot com and see what we've got there for you. Cool. All right, Ty, was that pretty much it or anything else you wanted to wrap up? Oh, good, all right.